In this video, you're going to need to have a graphing calculator handy. So if you don't have yours, at this point right now I want you to pause the video, retrieve your graphing calculator, and then come back to the video. Great, so now that you have your graphing calculator, we're going to talk in this video about distance from a point to a line. In the past, we've talked about using the distance formula to find the length or the distance between two points, but now we're going to switch things up a little bit and include both a point and a line. Let's go ahead and get started. In example one, they ask us to find the distance from the point P with coordinates 2, 5 to each of the following lines. You probably guessed, because the graph is there, that the very first thing that we're going to do is plot point P on our set of coordinate axes. So there's point P there in green. And they want us to find the distance from point P, first of all, to the line whose equation is x equals negative 5. Now recall that the graph of the line whose equation is x equals negative 5 is going to be a perfectly vertical line passing through the x-axis at negative 5. So here's my line x equals negative 5. So what we're trying to do then is we're trying to find the distance from this green point P to this pink dotted line whose equation is x equals negative 5. Now there's a lot of different ways I could find that distance. I could find it like that. I could find it at a slant like that. I could find it along a perfectly horizontal like so. So we have to have a set definition or a set way of always finding distance from a point to a line. And we say, or we measure, distance from a point to a line to be the length of the perpendicular segment that's drawn from that point to the line. So if I go back over here to my graph, I can go ahead and erase that blue one because it's not perpendicular. And I can erase the yellow one because it's not perpendicular. The distance from point P to that pink dotted line is going to be the number of units along that purple line segment. So if I count them up, I find that the distance is exactly 7 units. Likewise, I can also, too, go find the distance from that point to the line whose equation is x equals 6, simply by going on my graph and graphing that line, and then counting the number of units along that horizontal distance. So it looks like 4 units. The line y equals 8 is going to be a vertical line passing through the y-axis at y equals 8. So there's the line whose equation is y equals 8. And again, if I count the number of units there, I end up with 3 units. And lastly, the line whose equation is y equals negative 1. It's going to pass through the y-axis at negative 1, making the distance from our point P to the line whose equation is y equals negative 1 exactly 6 units. So when we're dealing with lines that are horizontal or vertical, this becomes a relatively simple process because we can plot the points, graph the lines, and simply count the number of units. But what happens when our line isn't perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical? Then things start to get really interesting. For instance, in number two, they're asking us to the, to the nearest hundredth to find the distance from the point whose coordinates are 5, 3 to the line whose equation is y equals x plus 5. I'm going to keep in mind and follow all of the same pro thought processes that I followed up above when I found my distance from a point to a line. But again, the fact that this line is not perfectly horizontal or vertical is going to kind of throw some interesting twists and turns into the problem. So I'm still going to go ahead and graph my line, sorry, graph my point. I'm still going to go ahead and graph that line too. So the line whose equation is y equals x plus 5 is going to have a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 5. So when I go ahead and put that on the grid here, there's my y-intercept of 5, my slope of 1 is going to go like such. So there's my line. Now even though this line isn't perfectly horizontal or vertical, 
that whole notion of the distance from the point being to the line being measured along the perpendicular still holds true. So what I want to do next is I want to go ahead and I want to find the equation of the line that passes through point Q, what is perpendicular to y equals x plus 5. So in this particular case here, the slope of my original line, this y equals x plus 5, he had a slope that was equal to 1. And since his slope was equal to negative 1, the slope of a line that's perpendicular to him is going to be negative 1. So I want the equation of a line passing through 5, 3 with a slope of negative 1. Because I know the coordinates of a point and the slope, I'm going to use the point slope form of an equation. So my y minus y1 equals my m times x minus x1. Now if you wanted to go through and find the y-intercept, you're certainly welcome to write the equation in slope-intercept form. But this is a little bit less work, a little bit less complicated. And in general, if I can pick less complicated over more complicated, I'm picking less complicated. So there's the equation of a line that passes through point Q and is perpendicular to y equals x plus 5. And if I wanted to, I could even sketch that into the picture. So what I really need to do now is find the coordinates where the line y equals x plus 5 and my green dotted line intersect. And this is where the calculator can be very, very, very handy. So our first equation, remember, was y equals x plus 5. Our second equation was this y subtract 3 equals negative 1 times x minus 5. Now we can either solve this system algebraically, which is going to involve quite a little bit of work, or I can simply use the technology that's available to me through the graphing calculator in order to graph both of these lines on the same set of coordinate axes and find the spot where they intersect. Since the second option is going to be more efficient, I'm going to choose that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start by solving the second equation in terms of y so that I can get both of these into the, the form y equals something. So to undo adding a 3 to both, sorry, subtracting a 3 to both sides, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And that's going to give me y equals negative 1 times the quantity x subtract 5 plus 3. Now some of you are going to feel more comfortable using distributive property and then going ahead and combining some like terms. But really what's important here is that I have this in the form y equals so that I can go ahead and substitute it or plug it into my graphing calculator. So the, uh, the two lines that I want to look at again are this original one, the y equals x plus 5, and my perpendicular line to that, y equals x minus negative 1 times the quantity x minus 5 plus 3. And what I'm really looking for here is the, e the point where these two intersect. So this is where I'm going to go ahead and get on my graphing calculator. And on my graphing calculator, I'm going to start by going home. I'm going to add a new document. And I'm going to add a graph. And I first want to start by graphing that original equation, y equals x plus 5. Once I get him graphed, I now want to go ahead and add a second graph. So recall from your algebra class last year that to add a second graph, you're going to hit control g, which will bring up a new function. And I'm going to go ahead now and enter that second line into my graphing calculator. You notice that the blue line and the red line intersect very, very close to the edge of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to Menu, go into Window, and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Now that gives me a little bit better picture of where those two fellows intersect. I'm going back to Menu now, and again, you've done this before in your algebra class. I want to go into and analyze the graph and find their point of intersection. So I'm going to go just to the left of where they intersect, click on Enter, just to the right of where they intersect, click on Enter, 
And my calculator will tell me that the solution to the system of equations, or the point where they intersect, is the point whose coordinates are 1.5, 6.5. So when looking at my graph up here, this point has coordinates 1.5, 6.5. Q, remember, had coordinates 5, 3. So the distance from Q to that dotted line along the perpendicular is going to be the distance between the purple endpoint 5, 3 and the purple endpoint 1.5, 6.5. So now that I have a couple points and I want to find the distance between them, now I can go back to my old familiar distance formula to find the length of that line segment. Recall that anytime you're going to use a formula, you need to first put it on the paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is jot that formula down. If it's helpful, go ahead and write the coordinates of those points that you want to find the distance between down here. So 1.5 comma 6.5 was my first point. My second point was that point. And then you can go ahead and substitute right into the distance formula. And remember, then when doing the distance formula, it's easiest once you substitute into the equation, it's easiest just to go ahead and grab your calculator. I'll go open up a new document. This time I want to do a calculator. And just go ahead and plug in what you see between the parentheses. So I had a 1.5 subtract a 5. I wanted to take that difference and square it. To that I had a 6.5 subtract a 3. I want to take that distance and square it and add the sum of those two together. So square root of 24.5. Keep in mind here that they've asked us to find this distance to the nearest hundredth. So I have one last thing to do in order to wrap that problem in, up, and that is to plug square root of 25, 24.5 into my calculator and round to the nearest hundredth. Now to indicate on my paper that this is a rounded answer, when I go to write my distance, I'm going to do distance and these squiggly little equal signs, so indicating that the distance is approximately equal to, when rounded to the nearest hundredth, 4.95. So this video was chock full of interesting ideas. It asks you to pull back some of your knowledge from your algebra class regarding systems and how to solve them and how to use the technology that's available to you. This video is really chock full of a lot of good information. As always, I do want you to take some time and think and reflect upon what you think are the important takeaways from the video and summarize those on the next page. And then see if you can apply what you've learned in order to find the distance from point A to the given line in example two.